I don't believe in chance. I believe in legends. Stories that don't just happen, but stories that are supposed to. It's the only way I can make any sense out of it. It's spooky to think about the odds, really. The way that time brought together unconnected pasts into exactly the correct present and started writing a whole new future. Everything up until that point is still a mystery. All the unanswered questions are the ones that add to the coincidence of the whole thing. How did it get there? But ultimately, why did it pick me? The reality is that it did. And it's what we do with reality that really matters. There's just shy of seven and a half billion people on this earth, and this bow chose me to be the one that tells its story. I don't believe in chance. I believe in legends. And I feel pretty damn special to be a part of this one. In the fall of 2018, I went on a fishing trip with a really good friend of mine. It was a trip we talked about doing for a while. And everything happened to be perfect when we got there. It was a fly fisherman's paradise. Now we cruised this entire canal road and just looked for pockets of fish. And when we were looking for those fish, it's when I saw it. And Chris didn't believe me. So we just kept driving. And I said, dude, you gotta turn around. If there's any chance that's what I think it is, we need to go back and I need to see, and I need to see what I can do. And all of the training that I had in archery brought me to this exact moment. I believe that entirely. And what was laying at the bottom of that river was exactly what I thought it was. I don't know how and I don't know why, but something put me right there to see that, recognize it, go down and get it, and be able to start this story. Cables are still good. It looks a little dirty. There's, it's, it's got some oysters in it. Some oysters? There's a live crawdad on this thing. <laughs> and he is pissed off. Weird. Those are nice arrows too. Okay. How heavy is that bow? It's really not light right now. It's a little, carbon element G3. Camo per pattern's still pretty solid. I thought that carbon bow was a light bow. This uh, this is a good find. I'm gonna shoot this bow this year. This is gonna happen. Rebuilding it wasn't actually as tedious as I thought it was going to be. The cleaning, that was crazy. But once I got all the parts, all the pieces, and everything that I needed, everything went right back into spec. Then it was time to actually go shoot this thing. And the first time I drew it back, I was kind of terrified. So this is the zombie bow, it's all put back together. I haven't shot it yet, I haven't drawn it back yet. I'm absolutely horrified, but we'll see how it goes. We got four turns pulled out of the limbs. Timing's way off. But that's actually all right, and that's what I wanted, so. Um, I'm not going to shoot it until I time it. I just wanted to draw it and make sure it was going to draw and not explode. <laughs> as soon as I pulled that trigger and that arrow went exactly where it was supposed to go, straight down range and hit just as hard as a brand new off the shelf bow, I just had this feeling that it was a really, really incredible thing to be a part of. <laughs> that is... That was pretty quiet. Look at that knock trail. Yeah. That thing is straight out of the river. Hoyt, you make a good product. QAD, you make a good product. <laughs> Everything you hoped? Everything and more. Killing it's, a deer? It's gonna. I'm so excited for that. Up until this point, I'd never been the person that's killed a big whitetail, and that's because I've never been the person that put the work in necessary to get close to a big whitetail. That way we can look at what's coming out. The closer I got to opening day, the more excited I was getting because I knew that I had big deer in the area. I had pictures on pictures of big deer 
all close to stands that I'd hung. And the only problem was they were there at the wrong hours of the day. That's something that I knew was gonna get better as the year rolled on and as their patterns broke, but I was very excited to go into this season. About 55 degrees out, it's been cold the last couple, three or four days, but today it's starting to warm up. Um, I haven't seen a ton of deer. I've had one good encounter with uh, Buck that I'm, I can't even remember what I named him, but it was a good big eight point. He just wouldn't turn and give me a shot. So uh, I pulled cameras about a week ago and I did have good pictures of some big deer that were still in the area. I'm sitting on the edge of the biggest pocket of timber that will hold these deer. They got nowhere to really go. The closest cornfield that they're gonna eat is a while from here. So if there's deer around, Hopefully tonight's going to be the night that we see him. And the next morning I woke up to go and it was one of those mornings where I just didn't want to go hunting. I did. I told myself, I'm like, the wind is wrong. You're going to get completely blown out of anything that's, that you try to see. And you should, like, you just shouldn't even go. But my buddy Alex and I have this saying that we can't kill him from the couch. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to go try it. Um, and that happened to be the best decision that I've ever made. He was straight downwind of me. There's no reason he shouldn't have winded me. There's no reason that anything should have gone the way that it did. When you play by the rules of hunting, like if you try to write up somebody doing something the wrong way, but got rewarded just for going out and doing it anyway, that's how this morning went. I just arrowed a giant. I don't think I've ever, I've never shot a deer that big. It was a little quartering too, but he gave me the shot. It was right where it needed to be. That's a big deer. He came right in, like literally straight down wind. The shot didn't pass through. At this point, we're five seasons in. It's taken close opportunities, evaporated blood trails, patience, practice, dedication, and a sheer trust that it's all gonna happen exactly when it's supposed to. It makes too much sense to think that chance had anything to do with it. This is a legend. It's a story that's built to survive, and as it echoes down through generations, there's always gonna be that one unanswered question. How? How did it get there? How does it still work and how is any of this actually possible? Right now, I'm not really worried about figuring that out. The only question I'm looking forward to answering, how much of this story is still left to tell?